Welcome to this video. We are going to learn where the single slit diffraction pattern comes from and why it's produced at all. Here's what that means, single slit diffraction. When you take a laser light and you shine it through a slit and then continuing on toward a back wall, when the laser light hits the back wall, it forms a spot. But if you inspect the spot closer, you see a bright spot in the middle with these fringes, as they're called. We could plot the intensity like we've done already as a function of position. And you see that right in the middle, when the position is zero, here at the middle, there is a really, really high intensity or brightness. And then the intensity, the brightness, follows this pattern shown by the graph. Where does this come from? That's the question I want to answer. We will start by imagining that you are at the pond, and the water is nice and still, but then you pick up this big rock, and you carry it over to the pond, and you let go. When the big rock strikes the water, ripples spread out. Hmm, but then imagine you say, okay, I want to try an experiment. Instead of getting a big rock, you go around, and you find all of these tiny little pebbles, and you glue them all together so that they form the same shape as the big rock. And you drop those pebbles, which have been glued together, into the water. What happens? To answer that question, I'm going to focus just on these two pebbles, but keeping in mind that the rock mass, the big cluster, is still there. So here's the outline of the cluster. When this pebble on the left strikes the water, it creates little waves because it's a smaller pebble. And when this pebble strikes the water, it creates littler waves because it's a small pebble too. That same effect is produced for every pebble on the perimeter. This pebble has waves that kind of spread out after a while. This pebble has, wa has waves that spread out this one does. Every pebble on the perimeter has waves that spread out from that pebble. These tiny little waves produced by the little pebbles are called wavelets. And this is actually a concept that we use in physics. So every single pebble on the perimeter produces waves that start small and kind of spread out to this shape. But remember, you're dropping the whole cluster into the water at once. And so when, those, when the cluster strikes the water, all of those little wavelets are produced at the same time. The combined effect of all of these wavelets is to produce a single big wave that looks like this. So you see that, in fact, when we add up all of these little wavelets, they produce the same shape as when you drop the big boulder. Now, these little wavelets will spread out, and you could draw in the new shape, the combined shape in light blue. And they spread out again, and they spread out again. So what have we learned? You can take a big rock, and you can imagine the big waves that it generates. Or, if you'd like, you can take many tiny, tiny pebbles, and you can imagine the many tiny wavelets that they produce, which spread out. In fact, these two pictures are equivalent. The pebbles have to be really small, and they have to form the shape of the one big rock. Using this idea of tiny little pebbles we can explain why a single slit produces diffraction. Let's say you've got your single slit right here, the back screen is here, and we send in water waves toward this slit. When the water waves strike the slit, it is identical to dropping in a rock shaped like the slit. When the waves strike the slit, you might as well be dropping in a rock slit shaped just like the slit. But that single rock could be broken into pebbles. 
Now I'm going to only consider the edge pebbles, and this same effect that I'm going to show you is produced for the ones in the middle. This pebble produces circular waves. The wave spreads out, and while this one spreads out, a new wave is formed. These two waves spread out, and while they spread, a new crest is formed. Now, between every two crests, between these two crests, there's a trough. And I'll mark the trough with a dotted line, the crests with a solid line. If you look at the wave between these two crests, there's another trough. And looking at those distances, there'd be another trough right there. The exact same thing happens with this pebble. A circular wave is sent out. This shows, this line here, shows the crest, the top of the wave. That wave spreads out. And while it does, a new crest is made. These two, these two wave fronts spread out, and while they do, a new crest, a new line of crests is made. Between these two crests, we have a trough, and between these two crests, we have another trough. And if you look at the distances, the location of the next trough would be right here. But remember, both of these pebbles are being dropped at the same time, or in other words, this one wave is striking both sides of the slit at the same time. So the effects are combined. We have overlapping waves from the two pebbles, or point sources as they're called. When we have overlapping waves, they can add together, constructive interference, or they can cancel out, destructive interference. Consider just what's happening along this arrow, this ray. At this first point, we have two solid lines. That means we have a crest from this wave overlapping with a crest from this wave. When you add two crests together, they make a giant crest. At this point, we have a trough, a dotted line from this wave, overlapping with a trough from this wave. Whenever we add two troughs together, we get a giant trough. At this point, again, it's two solid lines. This solid line overlaps with this solid line. So we have two crests overlapping. A giant crest is formed there at this point. And then at this point, we have two troughs overlapping because there's two dotted lines connected. And so we have, at, the, at that point, a big, big trough. And finally, we have two crests, which form a big, giant crest. So everywhere along this ray, everywhere along this ray, we have constructive interference, and we have a giant, big, big super wave. The same thing happens along this ray. We have two crests, two troughs, two crests, two troughs, and it would continue if we let these waves go on. And if you look again, there's another place where we have a line of constructive interference. It's along this ray. Two crests, two troughs, two crests, and it would continue. Now, along this ray, what's happening? It's something different. At the first point, we have a crest in solid overlapping with a dotted line, which means a trough, and they cancel out. At this point, we have a trough now overlapping with a solid line, which represents a crest. And again, they cancel out. Right here, we have now, this is a, let's see, what was it, a, a crest right here, overlapping with this dotted line, which represents a trough. And so those cancel. And you get the same thing here, a trough overlapping with a crest, a dotted line meeting a solid line, and they cancel out. So everywhere along that orange line, everywhere along this line, we have destructive interference, perfect destructive interference, and there is no wave there. There's another spot where this happens. It's along this line, along this ray. So if we think back to the picture that we began trying to explain, it was this picture of the laser with bright spots and dark spots. When you shoot water waves through a slit, you get this pattern. Light waves are no different. Wherever you see a red line hitting the screen, 
we would have a huge intensity wave wherever you see a, an orange line that's where there's destructive interference and the intensity is zero we could do the exact same thing showing the locations of bright and dark spots wherever you have constructive interference between the two little wavelets there's a bright spot wherever you have destructive interference on the orange line between the wavelets there's a dark spot the final thing for us to do is watch this happen here's what it looks like when water passes through a single slit and you're looking at the water after it goes through the slit just by inspecting the picture you can see very clearly giant waves here this is a line of constructive interference where the two wavelets are always adding together and here there's no wave this is a line of destructive interference where the two wavelets are always canceling out let's watch the video and i should say this video is called measure for measure uh, it's from the world science festival and dr professor brian green is presenting he's talking about a quantum phenomenon but he's in the process describing the exact same thing we are studying so uh, let's watch the simulation from world science festival and here it goes really cool so you notice that the constructive interference always occurs along the same line and the destructive interference always occurs along the same line or ray so it's easy to see this happening with water now let's make the jump to light you can't look in a room and see the crests of the light overlapping or see the crests and troughs canceling out uh, it's just not how light works so here's what we have to do wherever you see big water waves that's where you would have a bright spot of light wherever you have canceling out that's where there would be no light it would be a dark spot and again wherever you have big water waves with light that's where you would get a bright spot so the size of the wave corresponds to light and its brightness let's watch and see you've got these bright spots where the waves add together and dark spots where the waves cancel out. So here's the link to the YouTube video if you'd like to watch more. And this pattern of bright and dark spots on the back is the same as this pattern that you see when you view the laser light on the back screen. That pattern is described by this intensity graph. And we've now explained why we see that bright and dark pattern of light when we shine it through when we shine the laser through the slit onto the back wall